Hello friends, in this video we're going to talk about RSA and look at how RSA works using a simple example. Now first, RSA is used to encrypt and decrypt messages. The important thing to understand is any message is just a bit pattern. Now any bit pattern can be uniquely represented by an integer. Now encrypting a message is thus the same as encrypting a number. So any message is like just a bit pattern, for example, m is equal to 1001001, which can be uniquely represented by this decimal number 145. So encrypting m is very is equivalent to encrypting the corresponding number, which in this case is 145. And when we encrypt it, what it gives us is another new number, which is the cipher text. So let's see how RSA works. We first choose two large prime numbers, p and q. Each of P and Q is 1024 bits long. Now next what we compute is the multiplication of P and Q and we store this in the variable N. We also compute Z which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. Now we're going to choose a value E which is less than N and that has no common factors with Z. This means that E and Z are relatively prime to each other. We are also going to choose d such that e times d minus 1 is exactly divisible by z. That is, when e d minus 1 is divided by z, it leaves no remainder. Or e d mod z is also 1. So what we do is we first use this n and e and we call this the public key. And the private key is nothing but n and d taken together. Now, in the previous slide, we saw how NE and ND are computed. Now, to encrypt this message M, what we do is the following. We take the message M, which, remember, is nothing but a number in decimal. We raise it to the power of E, and then we take mod of N. This is what gives us the ciphertext C. Now, to decrypt this particular bit pattern or this integer number, what we have is we take C, raise C to the power of D, and then compute the modulus with N. This is going to give us N. This might seem like it's magic, but all this is due to modular arithmetic. So, what we are doing is M to the power of E mod N, which is exactly C, we raise this whole thing to the power of D, and we then compute mod of m. And when we do that, we are going to get m. We'll see how this happens in a later slide. Before doing the math, let us look at a particular example to see how RSA works. So we have this particular bit pattern, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, which is nothing but m as 12. m is the message, which is the integer representation of the message. Now let's assume that Bob wants to encrypt this, so he chooses two prime numbers. In this case, we are considering two relatively small prime numbers, p equals 5 and q equals 7. Therefore, n turns out to be the multiplication of p and q, which is 35. Recall that z is p minus 1 times q minus 1, and hence z is 4 times 6, which turns out to be 24. Now we have to choose an e such that e and z are relatively prime. So we can choose E equals 5, because then 5 and 24 are relatively prime to each other. Now we are going to choose a D such that E D minus 1 is exactly divisible by Z. To do that, we choose, let's, we choose D equals 29. So if you do the math, that is 29 times 5 minus 1, you will see that that's exactly divisible by 24. Now to encrypt this 8-bit message that I was talking about, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, what we have to do is we first get the message M, which is 12. Then we raise it to the power of E, which is essentially 12 raised to the power of 5, which is what is given in the screen, which is 24832. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the ciphertext. To get the ciphertext, we are going to do M raised to the E, which is 24832. 3, 2. We're going to take that and do the modular arithmetic with n, which is 35. Turns out that it's going to give us a ciphertext, which is 17. Now, this is a ciphertext which is going to be sent by Bob 
to Alice. Now, when Alice receives this ciphertext, what Alice is going to do is she's going to decrypt it. So she has the ciphertext, which is 17. Now, the 17 is going to be raised to the power of D, which is 29. And if you do that, you're going to get this huge number that you can see on your screen. Now, to get M back, what happens is we take C to the power of D and do the mod of N with that. When you do that, you are going to magically receive 12. So this is how RSA works. Now, before moving forward, what we will see is why this modular arithmetic is correct. So what we're doing when we're doing the encryption is we're computing C, which is M to the power of E mod N. And when we're decrypting, what we're doing is we're taking C to the power of D and we're doing mod of D. And we hope that we're going to get M again. So to do that, we take help of this particular formula, and which is x to the power of y mod n is nothing but x to the power of y mod z mod n. So let's see, when you're trying to do c to the power of d mod n, we're going to first, that is we're going to that you're trying to decrypt c, we're going to first put the value of c in there, which is m to the power of e mod n, the whole thing to the power of d mod n. Using simple modular arithmetic, this is nothing but m to the power of ed mod n. Now using the formula that I just mentioned, which is x raised to the power of y mod n is nothing but x raised to the power of y mod z mod n. So we have here this y is ed and the x is m. So what we're going to do is we're going to do m to the power of ed mod z mod n. Now remember that ed minus one is direct is completely divisible by z. So, so when you divide ed and by z, we will get a remainder of one. Hence, ed mod z is going to be one. So m to the power of one mod n is what we are going to do. Get and when we do that, we are going to receive nothing but m. So this is how our RSA works. There's another important uh, property of RSA, which is if you use the public key first and then are decrypted to using the private key, you're going to get, get M on. And similarly, if you use the private key first and then use the public key on, this, on a message M, you're still going to get M. So both these results are going to be the same. So it's kind of symmetric and that is going to be very useful. Now, I'll conclude this slide by, by talking about why RSA is so secure. Now, suppose you know Bob's public key, which is n comma e. You should not be able to be able to determine his private key, which is d, because the private key consists of n comma d. To be able to determine d, what we will have to do is we'll need to know n without knowing the two prime factors, p and q, because those are chosen by Bob. Now, the reason why finding this D is very difficult is factoring a big number is hard. By hard, I mean it's computationally hard. It takes a lot of resources, and even if you invest a lot of resources, it is one of the, one of the computer, most computationally hard problems, and it is not going to give, you are not going to be able to determine D. Now, so how is RSA used in practice? While it is hard, to, to get somebody's private key by just knowing their public key. It is also computationally intensive to use RSA. So there is exponentiation in RSA and that is an in, exp, computationally intensive process. So if you take large messages and encrypt them using RSA and then use RSA to decrypt them, it's going to take a lot of time because you have to do this raising different integers to, uh, to the power of other integers. So to use RSA in practice, what we use is we use RSA and DES in conjunction with each other. Now DES is at least 100 times faster than RSA. So what we do is we, when we use RSA in practice, we use this notion of session keys. So we use public key cryptography to first secure the connection, then we use an, another key for that particular session. 
which is called a session key and it's used and it's a symmetric session key. It's used for encrypting data. So what Alice and Bob do is if they want to exchange messages to each other, they first use RSA to exchange a symmetric key KS. And once both Alice and Bob have this KS, which is the symmetric key, they use symmetric key cryptography to send all their messages for that particular session. With this, I'll complete this video. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. Thank you.